Hello Bison fans, I'm Jeremy Jorgensen, joined by uh, assistant wrestling coach Gerard Garnett, and we're going to talk about Bison wrestling for the next few minutes here, set up the week, recap the Wyoming duel, and get you set up for what is the stretch run for Bison wrestling. It's kind of a key time here. Uh, Gerard, let's talk about this Wyoming duel, kind of set it up. Uh, Wyoming came in, they were wrestling well. It was obviously a, a very tough matchup. The Bison lose that. Give me your broad uh, perspective of how that duel turned out. Uh, you know, not well. Not well. We knew where they were, were going to be a tough team. We, we told our guys about it. You know, we worked on some different positions during the week just to scout the team. Um, you know, and there were some things that went well. But there was a lot of things that also went bad. So, um, you know, overall, I think I don't think we necessarily got out wrestled in positions. I don't think they did anything that we were unfamiliar with or that we haven't seen. We've had a lot of different exposure this season thus far. So I think it, it really came down to they were just willing to wrestle for longer than we were. Um, and, and, and a little bit tougher and, and stuff like that. So, I mean, um, overall, I'd say we had a couple of bright spots overshadowed by a lot of bad spots. You know, I think a guy like a Paul Bianchi and Clay Green were a couple of bright spots. Even a guy like Nico Kalunga, who was really overmatched against a guy that was number one in the country. And he went out and I thought his fight was actually great, despite being outmatched by a, by a national finalist. So. You and Coach Kish uh, in this wrestling room have a lot of expectations. So what did you learn about your guys in that game or, or maybe some things that you uh, need to tweak a little bit? You know, I, I think we, we learned that, uh, you know, our, our guys are prepared. They are prepared. They can wrestle. Um, they're familiar with positions. I think we learned that maybe we just need to put them in more tough environments, more tough situations. Um, you know, maybe switch up our training just a little bit as far as that goes, just to make sure our guys mentally um, you know, are, are where they need to be, you know, make some, some conditions tougher at practice. You know, I, I, I look at uh, using a football analogy here, Coach Bill Belichick does that with his guys yeah. in, in New England with the Patriots. You know, he, he makes sure that they go through really everything in practice that could go wrong. He makes sure it goes wrong for them, puts them in those tough situations, makes them experience a lot of adversity in practice so that when they get in games and things go wrong or there's a bad call or, or there's a bad play or, or turnovers or anything like that, you know, they can, they can get through it and it doesn't affect them at all. I think we need to do something maybe similar and take a page out of that book and do that with our guys. You know, make, make this a little bit of a tougher practice environment, you know, so that these guys, when things do start to go wrong, it doesn't spiral out of control. And I think that's what we saw on Saturday night. Hey, there's a couple of good opportunities coming up uh, to get back on track. Uh, you're at Purdue on Friday, at Northern Illinois on Sunday. So it's a road trip. Sometimes those come at a good time. Maybe this is a good time for a road trip. Get the guys together, uh, a little camaraderie there, get them close and go out on the road and fight. Sometimes on the road, uh, teams can have a us against the world mentality. Is this a good time for that? I think so. I think so. You know, we, we had uh, prior to Wyoming, we were, we were home. We didn't have a competition, but it was an off weekend for us. Obviously, we were home this past week. So I think it's a good time to hit a road trip, you know, and, and sometimes I think, like you said, you're a little bit more edgy when you go on the road. You know, things aren't quite as easy. They come a little bit harder. You're not as comfortable, you know, so I think it's a perfect time to actually get on the road and, and, and take on a tough team in a, in a Big Ten team like Purdue. You know, and we've had some recent success against some Big Ten teams. Uh, you know, like we had last year. So I think this will be perfect. I, th I think this is exactly what our guys need, you know, and the good thing about it is we're right back to it. You know, if the Wyoming duel was our last match of the season, that'd be a pretty sour way to end things. But, you know, it, it's uh, another test run for our guys. We get to come make some tweaks this week and get out and, and, and test ourselves again. And we'll do the same thing the following week and the following week all the way through championship season. Wrestling duels are a lot about matchups. Uh, how do we match up with Purdue and Northern Illinois? And who are some of the guys that are, are starting to trend upward, starting to peak a little bit? Mm -hmm. You know, so I, I think when you look at it on paper, you know, looking at a team like Purdue is a team that we thought from the very beginning of the season when we scheduled this dual meet that we were going to be able to compete very well with. We do think we match up well with them. There's going to be some very good matchups, similar to like how there's some really good matchups in the Wyoming duel. Yeah. Um, you know, some more top 20 matchups, ranked guy versus ranked guy. I think a guy that we're starting to see wrestle well is a guy, a guy like Paul Bianchi. He, out in Reno, lost to uh, the kid's backup, Drake Foster, that he just uh, beat this past weekend. He lost to his backup, um, Olsen, out in uh, Reno. You know, and then he comes out and he gets bonus points against the starter. You know, that's progress, you know, and, and Reno was back in middle of December and now we're in the middle of middle to late January. And I think he's starting to trend upwards and he's starting to figure some different things out with positions. Um, you know, Clay Ream is is doing what Clay Ream does. He's finding a way to win. 
you know, and he's a, he's a guy that we expect a lot out of. And whether it's close and he's getting wins or whether he's, you know, blowing guys out of the water and getting bonus for us, you know, he's a guy that we expect to win. And, and I think he's doing his job and continuing to beat some of the best guys in the country. You know, he now owns wins over, you know, four or five top 15 guys in the country, which is good. You know, and I think you look at a guy like Andrew Fogarty even, and again, he's, he took a loss to a, to a tough guy who he's been splitting matches with recently in uh, Branson Ashworth. I think that was like the fourth time that they've wrestled since last year. So, um, you know, and we have some other guys that are starting to figure it out as well. They just got to continue to grow and continue to believe in what we're doing and, and we'll be there by the end of the season. So The margin of error is so thin in a duel, isn't it? I mean, people can just look at the final score of the duel in Wyoming, but I'll tell you what, in a lot of those weights, there was 50-50 matches. Yeah. How do you get some of these guys to close out in that third period to close out, get the points they need to win those close matches? Because, you know, three or four of those turn and that Wyoming duel is different. Right. Yeah, you know, you look at 49 was a three-point match, I believe. 65 was a two-point match. You know, uh, we're, we're right there oh, with yeah. a couple of those matches. Heavyweight was obviously close. When you talk about three matches like that, that's a huge swing. You know, that's an 18-point swing right there, right there alone between yeah. those three matches. You know, so I think, I think the way we fix that is, again, in the practice room. You know, practice has to be, you know, and, and I said it, you know, on Saturday night, there has to be something more on the line for these guys. You know, when we get late into a period when we're in practice and you are tired and you're, you know whether or not you're winning or losing the go. You can either take the last minute and say, hey, you know what, I'm tired, I'm not going to try and win. I'm already down by four, it's pointless. Or you can try and go and close the gap and, and win that match, win that go. You know, same thing if you're winning. You know, you're, you're keeping score in your head. We're all competitive, right? And so, you know, if you're up by five, go try and get the major when there's only a minute left. Take the guy down three or four times and get the bonus points. You have to do it in practice and here first to be able to do it on the competition floor. You know, that's, that's like saying, I'm going to not practice what I'm good at in here and then all of a sudden go and do it on the weekends. It just doesn't work that way really in any sport for that matter. So I think, uh, you know, our guys need to make that more of a focus in here. You know, because when it when it clicks in and we're in the sixth minute out of seven out on the weekend, you know, wrestling Purdue or Northern Illinois, for example, when that clicks in their head and that's what they're used to doing, that's exactly what their body is going to follow suit with. But if they're not used to doing it, they're going to revert back to old habits. And that's what we're changing is old habits. Fascinating stuff about the psychology of wrestling right there. Uh, great stuff. Best of luck to you and the guys at Purdue, Northern Illinois, Friday and Sunday. We'll recap that for you next week. And then a big home week uh, the following week. So this is, this is really a key time, isn't it? Yes, absolutely. You know, we're getting to the end of it here. We have two away matches this weekend, two home matches the following weekend. Then we take a short break, and then we have the, the season finale in SDSU for the regular season, which is going to be away down at Frost Arena. So this is it. These are big uh, five dual meets, and, and really this is what's going to help qualify a lot of these guys a spot for the Big 12 tournament to uh, have a chance to go to nationals. So this is a, uh, this is a crucial time. That's Gerard Garnett. Thanks for his time. Thanks to Ryan Nelson and Rich Grossman for their time as well. We'll be back next week to recap Purdue and Northern Illinois in Bison Wrestling.